Hi, my name is Nuno Bacharel, Communications Manager at BCEF, and for this new edition of Meet the Experts, we'll be talking with a recognized figure in the field of fire safety. We'll be talking with Dr. Jürgen Troitsch, an expert that since 1984 provides international consultancy and scientific expertise on the fire behavior of plastics, flame retardants, polymer applications, and environmental aspects. Today, Jürgen will be telling us more about his experience and his views on all aspects of fires and the role of fire safety. Let's talk with Jürgen. Let's talk Roman. Jürgen, as a global expert on fire safety standards and the test methods, can you tell us more about your background and what motivated you to work in this area? Well, I'm a chemist and uh, studied chemistry in Germany at the uh, Aachen University, where I got my PhD. And then uh, I went for 10 years in the industry. Uh, and there I started in the research department. I started with flame returns and uh, the flame returns of expanded polystyrene. You see that at that point in time, I was already in the middle of everything. And uh, so, uh, after a certain time, I thought, well, it would be good to go to the application department. So I went to the application department, built up the fire safety lab there. And all, all of a sudden, I had to do with standards, regulation and whatever, because we had to have the, the right equipment. And so I looked at the literature, I found really nothing comprehensive. So I said, well, why not write a book? And so I asked my boss and said, yeah, why do, do, do? So I started to, to uh, write my book uh, with a part on fundamentals in the beginning, meaning what is a fire, the cause of the fire, what are flame returns, what is a mode of action, et cetera, et cetera. And the second part, the most important one was on fire safety regulations and testing uh, for the reaction to fire of combustible materials, in this case, plastics. We have seen a dramatic rise in the use of plastic materials in consumer product designs and the construction of our homes, offices and also transport. Plastics have, without any doubt, made our uh, modern world uh, better and better. But how would you qualify uh, the impact of uh, these materials on fire safety? Well, if we go back to the 1950s, in 1950, the world production of plastics amounted to 1.5 million tons. In 2018, we have now 360 million tons. So this was really exponential. And uh, it is all combustible material. So what is interesting on the other hand is that since, since 1950 to now, the amount of fires and the amount of fire deaths really decreased. So. How can you put this together? Well, it's very simple. Behind we have fire safety regulation and tests, which are very, very effective. So if the product, in this case, the plastics meet these requirements, it's fine. There will be less fires and also less fire deaths. And how can you meet them? For example, by using flame retardants. So it's as simple as that. The flame retardants, as I said, are commonly uh, used uh, nowadays to make uh, plastic resistant to ignition as a first layer of fire protection um, in the product design or build building uh, construction, how would you assess the value of uh, these uh, chemistries? If you look at a fire or at a flame, a flame is something which happens in a room, as we say in the gas phase, because it's in the air, more or less. So what is a flame? A flame is something where you have uh, very aggressive particles in the flame, which are called radicals. And here the OH radicals are those, the radicals are those who make the flame grow and make higher heat release, etc. So if you can prevent these uh, OH radicals from acting, so you're fine. And flame retards do that. And one of the most efficient flame retardant systems there in the gas phase are brominated flame retardants. On the other hand, you have other systems which act in the so-called condensed phase. That means they, they act in the substrate itself, in the plastic. So it, began, it begins to decompose a charred layer form, and this charred layer uh, hinders the oxygen 
and also the heat to get to, to the plastic. And at the same time, there are less combustible materials coming out. That's a nice system, but is, it is not as effective as the, the systems acting in the gas phase, for example, like brominated flame retardants. Yeah, you just uh, mentioned uh, brominated flame retardants. Why are uh, they often the go-to chemistries for manufacturers? Well, as I said, um, brominated flame retardants are the most effective ones, I would say, uh, in, in the flame retardant scene, so to say. So the manufacturers say, okay, we have a good, a good product, we, uh, from the point of view of effectiveness, but also it's, uh, you can have it at reasonable cost. I think that's an important argument too. And the other point is that technical things are also uh, on, on, the, on, on the good side, uh, because other systems may have problems from the technical side. That's one point. We know that in the past there had been some concerns about uh, brominated frame returns saying, well, uh, they, uh, they damage uh, the, the environment and also health, so they have a bad ecotox profile. And uh, so it was not very many, but a few, and all these were taken off the market now. And so we have a good system now, and what is important now coming up is the use of brominated polymeric flame returns. And polymeric frameterms have the big advantage that they are not bioaccumulable. Uh, and so that means they don't enter the body. So they have an excellent um, ecotox profile. This is also true for other flameterm systems. So the future is really in polymeric systems. And here, uh, brominated frameterms also play a very important role. You have done a lot of work on fire safety standards for public uh, transport. What's uh, a key change in this space where fire safety is improved by flame uh, retardants? Well, indeed, we have at the moment, we have a revolution. And uh, you approach already it uh, for public transportation, that's e-mobility. So we have electric buses now uh, driving around. So what, what, in, what is inside these buses? Well, we have big batteries, uh, lithium ion batteries, which are flammable in the end. And also we have and this is also the case for all the private cars we have now, the e-cars. Uh, we have, instead of the voltage we have right now, which is 12 to 48 volt, all of a sudden we will have voltages of 400 to 600 volts. So have a, we now have a lot of power there, so we have to make sure that uh, these systems are adequately protected against fire. And here again, you can use flame return, so that's good. But another revolution we have is now the IoT, the Internet of Things, and also the new networks, 5G and so. So you have a multitude of appliances which are used there. So it's exponential also. And they all contain combustible materials, plastics. And very often, if, if you look at the recalls, you, you can see that uh, the reasons for the recalls are Plastics are flammable, they are not self-extinguishing, they get easily on fire, etc. This means that the requirements are not followed up. So we have to be very careful about it for the fire safety of these systems. Here again, flame returns play a very important role. The first edition of your book, uh, Plastics uh, Flammability Handbook, was published in 1983 and we are now preparing uh, a fourth edition uh, to be released next year in 2021. Um, an amazing accomplishment, uh, Jürgen. What is the most uh, significant trend or change related uh, to this body of science that you have captured um, in this uh, new edition? Well, I think there are no basic changes uh, in, the, in the conception of the book. We have concentrated it a little bit more. That means uh, we have uh, looked uh, very closely into flame returns, mode of action, and what sort of flame returns we have, what are the families which are available. Uh, and at the same time, we also have put more weight on things like um, smoke and toxicity of fire effluents. So what are the standards which are used there? Also, what is the, the outcome of it? And also we have a specific chapter on combustion toxicology where we can see what happens from the acute uh, toxic species being involved in a fire. 
However, the, the main point is the uh, regulation and test of the rea uh, reaction to fire of uh, combustible materials, in this case plastics. And what we have done here is that we now have included much more countries and regulation and tests from Asia, because this is a coming market and uh, it is important for everybody. So therefore in building we have uh, uh, now uh, some more countries from Asia and particularly also for railways where there is a huge development in Asia and we have included these countries there. And I think this will really help the reader to see what's going on. And I believe uh, the book will contribute to have a better view of fire safety and hopefully also that we will have in the future um, a higher level of fire safety in general for the products we're talking of. Jürgen, uh, thank you so much. It has been a pleasure uh, to talk with you and thank you so much for giving uh, be giving us um, this, your, your expertise and sharing with us your experience on uh, uh, fire safety. Uh, we wish you the most of success um, for also the launch of uh, the new edition of your book. And I would like to thank you all that are uh, watching this video and for those uh, that want to learn more, visit our website www www.bsef.org and subscribe to our newsletter Let's Talk Bromine. Thank you so much. <laughs>